Hi, it's Lou Collins, and today I'm going to make a card for you. Now, I'm skipping ahead in the year a little bit to Valentine's, but of course, this can be made at Christmas or for just to send love to somebody who you think a lot about. Um, so this is using my Nordic Christmas panels, but just showing you that you don't have to use them, of course, for Christmas. So um, the, two, the two panels included are highly decorative, absolutely beautiful. Um, this one I'm going to cut first in a moment, but this one is the, the lower one, the base one. You can use either of these on their own. They don't have to be layered. If we just take a look at the design, you can just see that one has more detail than the other. That's kind of really the only difference. But as you peek through, you start to see other colours. So I'm, I'm going to take uh, to do this, I'm going to use a blending mat, which is going to be first before I do any die cutting. And I'm going to use, I'm going to need some blending brushes. Now the colours that I've used, or I'm going to use, are aged mahogany, abandoned coral and saltwater taffy, all from the Distress Oxide range. I'm going to start with the darker colour and I've actually got a new brush for this so I need to load my brush up and the area that I'm hoping to cover is going to be around here so draw around this if you want to in fact that's probably a good idea is just to take a pencil if I can find one that's always easier said than done even though I'm a crafter just go around the die just lightly a lot of this is going to be inked over, but it just gives me an idea of whereabouts I want to be doing my inking. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to put the aged mahogany at the bottom. A nice deep colour, absolutely gorgeous. I love this colour. There we go, about a third of the way up the heart, making sure it's quite solid colour there. Then Abandoned Coral next. And that's going to go right through the middle of this heart. And as I'm doing this, I am going to start blending it into that aged mahogany as well. Although the beauty of this technique is actually you don't need to do a huge amount of blending. Um, because a lot of it will be hidden away. So I've gone just up to the edge or just over the edge of the aged mahogany. I'm coming in with my aged mahogany brush there. It's got a little bit of ink left on it and I'm just going to go over the two, over the join line as such. And then I'm going to do exactly the same with the salt water taffy. There we go. Because my ink, my salt water taffy is starting to get dry now, I've used it so much. Uh, I did bring the ink pad directly to the paper and just spread that across, uh, apply the ink and then blended that out. So I'm not worried about these bits at the top here, but I've kind of got the main part of my design there all uh, ink blended. So let's do some die cutting. I've just put these to the side now. I don't need these anymore. And first of all, I'm going to die cut the panel that has the most detail. So this is going to be the top panel. So pop this on, a little bit of tape around the edges there to hold it still. This is a really detailed die and I'm going through a heavyweight cardstock. This cardstock is probably about 270, 280 GSM, really heavyweight. So um, I'm fully expecting to maybe need to run this through more than once, but we'll see how it goes. There we go. That looks like that has all cut absolutely beautifully, just going forwards and backwards. So taking all my tape and bits off, releasing everything from this die. We just use a pokey tool. There's release holes on the back of this die here, so I can pull this out. all cut perfectly so we've got lots of pin dot detail around here and if you want to you could actually go in and um, stitch into some of these holes I'm not going to do that today but it is definitely on my to-do list is to get that done so let's remove some of these there's a bit of tape folded over the corner there I wonder why that wasn't releasing 
end all the pieces. Now we don't actually need to worry about releasing the pieces from all of this die cut. You can see the design as it's starting to come through. Let's just take some of this waste out of the way. So I just want to uh, re remove these little tiny dots because I think these are going to be featured in my final card design. Now, if you're unsure, if you bring over a uh, your die, work out whereabouts you're going to. I think I'm going to have this in the centre. About there will probably be a good place for this. So as long as everything's poked out from that area, then we're good to go. Then we need to uh, die cut with the next panel down. So that's the panel with the slightly less detail. We need to die cut this one too. There we go. So I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to just wrap the tape around the edge to make sure that that's not going to move. Run that through the machine a couple of times until I'm sure that's cut through. Perfect, happy with that. Again, just a few of the tiny little dots. They always seem to hold themselves in there, but you can easily pop them out. Or if you have one of these uh, dye cleaning brushes, that would work as well. Okay, so what I need to do now is lay one over the other. And you can see how with the top one, you see through to the detail underneath. And it's really pretty. Uh, really beautiful detail. Now, obviously, I've not coloured in or removed all the pieces from uh, both sides, but you get the idea because we're focusing on this piece in the middle. And in fact, that would actually just look really pretty on its own, with kind of that faded background anyway. So, uh, yeah, really gorgeous. OK, so we need to glue these together. So I'm going to take a wet glue and I'm going to glue them. Um, sorry, I'm not going to take a wet glue. I'm going to take a repositionable glue. So I'm going to take a repositionable spray glue. I'm going to just hold this out of the way under my bin and I'm just going to spray onto the reverse of the top layer here. And pop this down just over the top where it needs, exactly where it needs to be. Making sure everything's lined up, like I say, repositionable for a reason, because I now want to die cut into this and make sure that everything there stays in place. So put my heart over the colour that we've created. There we go. And I'm going to die cut through both layers of this heart. Just check on the reverse that it has cut through everything before you remove it and then gently push through now what you'll find is you may have a couple of different layers so just going to break through these because because this is going through a lot, I mean, a lot of layers. There's one. Bit of something from my plate there. And lastly, this one. Oh, there's two. Because you've got the broken pieces, you are going to find that this is a staggered piece. But when you put them all back together, look at that. Beautiful. Okay. Now, uh, let's put this card together. So I'm going to take my die again and I'm going to position this whereabouts I'm going to want it on my card, which is, I think that's about central. I'm going to bring my pencil back in again and just lightly go around there with my pencil. Okay, now coming back to my blending mat, going to pick a colour. Let's pick the abandoned coral. That's the mid colour of all of these. Let's just have a quick tidy up here. Put a little bit of abandoned coral onto this mat. I'm going to spritz it with some water, just a little bit. Beautiful colour. 
and I'm going to take a brush. Now, in this case, it's going to be a water brush, so I can add more water if I need. There we go. And I'm just going to flick some of this colour around that heart, just to the top left and down to the bottom right. Not too much. Concentrating on these two areas only. I actually want some slightly bigger splats as well. There we go. Okay. So that can be wiped away and cleaned up. And this just needs to be allowed to dry. Okay, now bringing my three pieces back in. Now we attached this together using a repositionable glue. So in theory, you should easily be able to separate them. So what I'd like to do is separate the top from the bottom. I've got a little bit of white cardstock there that I want to remove. Make sure all the pieces have popped out of there. There we go. And the same for this one. Gorgeous blend through this bit. I love that. Just be gentle because obviously it's repositionable. You have got the ink underneath and you don't want to tear any of the ink. Now, with these pieces, you're going to find there's lots of sections. You can work your way through them. And you, as long as you put them down in order, you'll be able to find them again in a moment. And last one here. OK, so now I'm going to glue the ink tart down flat. So just some glue on the back here. I'm using my Sizzix Express glue. There we go. And just popping that down. I've got my pencil lines, which my pencil lines, I can just erase those if you can still see any of them afterwards take those away that was just our guide for our ink splatting it's probably a good idea to actually go with the bottom one next and then place the other one in the middle so lightly place that This one. Oh, that's completely off. I've obviously gone off with the top heart somewhere. And then there we go. That's better. OK, so we've got our first layer and now we need to add our second layer. Now, our second layer, I'm going to actually add this with foam. So it's going to get a little bit fiddly in places because I need to add some really tiny foam pieces and foam tape and pads to this. So I'm going to speed this bit up for you. So there's the heart finally layered up. So you've got that slight dimension in there as well. Um, really pretty. Now I'm just going to finish off with the word love over the top. Um, I do have some bits again. I'm going to bring in this eraser, which like I say, is just, it's a tool that I couldn't be without. And just take some bits of where I've had sticky tape and such. Just removes all them and gives it a really nice clean finish. So I'm going to die cut. Now this is from uh, one of my other ranges, one of my older ranges. It's called Brush Strokes, uh, and this is from the clipboard die set. And it's just the word love in a lovely brush script. Actually, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to change my mind mid uh, mid crafting. I'm going to come to this tape, which is what I was actually using. Um, to stick the heart down with and I kind of wish I'd used it all over the heart rather than cutting it into pieces but this is perfect for these words there is a tip to lining up the word with the die cut afterwards or the sticky with the die cut afterwards because of course this word is thin so there's a lot of movement in it so it's quite hard to line up when you've got a sticky piece and not so my tip is to leave this within the foam it's just come out a little bit there, but leave that within the foam base that you've just cut it from. Let it sit in there. There we go. Peel off the top layer of backing, I guess it is, from just the word and the word only. Pick up your die cut, as long as it's cut from a nice solid cardstock. And I'm going to come to this 
the letter here first, the L at the beginning. I'm going to push that down and then the rest should all fall into place. And because only the letters are sticky, we don't have other things catching anywhere. There we go. And now we can release the entire word from here. I just like to pull it away gently. Same with pieces from inside the letters. There's one. There's one. And then we can take the backing off there. So that's better. That's um, going to hold. So just allow that to fall so it's falling flat. And I'm just going to put the word love over the top there. There's one little tiny piece there. There we go. Lovely. Now, I think the only thing I would probably do just to finish that off is maybe a few little dew drops splattered around as well. Uh, but other than that, I'm happy with that. Um, really quick card. I say really quick. Um, you can make it really time consuming if you want to spend more time popping all the little pieces out, maybe even using your waist as well if you want to do that. Um, but this actual part is very quick to do, um, really pretty, quite contemporary as well. I think if you're going to make cards to sell for Valentine's Day, these ones will take you no time at all. And of course, with textures, you can absolutely be making to sell. So that's from at my Nordic Christmas range. So it's the Nordic panels, but used in a very different way.